Hello, good morning. It's a good Saturday morning. No, actually, I'm recording this. Oh, whatever. Good morning. So, uh, yeah, the last time we did the Kazakembui's tomb, it was quite a success, like a lot of views and whatever. I'm very happy. And uh, what we... But, but, but the Kazakembui didn't just build uh, his tomb uh, in Abydos. He also built the, like the, so basically he, w he built three enclosures, uh, as far as we know. An enclosure, what is an enclosure? An enclosure is just this big uh, uh, rectangular space with, with, a, with a huge wall. And actually I'm going to show you soon. But basically, because again, we built the biggest, oldest brick structure on the planet and the biggest stone structure oldest structure on the planet this guy is a record breaking pharaoh and no wonder it was the father of Joser and, um, and so so yeah we're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna go through this we're gonna go through three buildings this episode uh, we're gonna do Shunet and Zabib which is in the north cemetery of Abydos then we will do the the so-called Hierakompolis Fort. And then we will do the mysterious Gizer El Mudir. Yeah. Uh, if you like the video, don't forget to like it. And if you like to subscribe, please uh, subscribe because we will soon go through the pyramids. And uh, can't wait, can't wait. See ya. Here we are. So, as I said last episode, we did the Kazakemwi's tomb, which is uh, which is this one here. I'm going to show you in a second. Um, yeah. So, the tomb is this one here. You remember? So this is like mind-blowing organic structure, and it was such a magical plan. And as I mentioned before, Kazakemwi was is the father of of Djoser, and we're like 2600 BC, and uh, he built this beast in the North Cemetery of Abydos. And uh, now, for what we know, there are many enclosures uh, under the sand, and uh, what happened is that from from at least from what, what from what was excavated, uh, Aha was uh, Horaha was the first to build enclosures and uh, if you if you, do, if you remember Horaha also built like a triple tomb and uh, same thing did here he built a triple enclosure and um, and seems like there are a little like uh, subsidiary graves all around so he built you know he was like doing <laughs> going along with the trend of subsidiary graves uh, as you know as a first dynasty pharaoh and uh, so archaeologists uh, discovered that there was not just so so, so actually Kazakemwi enclosure is this one here is this big is this big is the biggest enclosure here and uh, but but there are you can you can see there are others under the sand and uh, all of them belongs to previous pharaohs so what hap what was what the theory is that every time uh, pharaoh built the tomb the the, the enclosure then the next will build with the same material as the previous. So these structures were recycled and uh, the, the previous served the, the one afterwards. Um, but Kazakemwi was the last one to, to do this. And so this is why, uh, this is why we have this Shunet at the bit because no one, nobody else uh, built after him. Uh, but and uh, also archaeologists says that uh, there might be other structure under the sand, but since they haven't excavated the whole thing, uh, we we still don't know. Um, so this is the <laughs> this is a view from Google Earth. This building is massive. Uh, actually, is the so as far as we know, this is the oldest massive brick uh, on the planet, and. Uh, it's just a mystery. I mean, the function of the of the structure was ceremonial, 
and uh, what does it mean? It means that there was a chapel here, I'm gonna show you the plan later, and uh, so the structure served as a kind of, you know, ceremonial, so basically once, uh, once in a while some people were kind of giving offers to, to the pharaoh, uh, but even though the tomb was not this one, the tomb is just whatever, like a kilometer down south, um, and so the first who actually had a survey of the of the place was August Mariette in 1869, and you can see uh, this is a beautiful plan already. And uh, back in the times, they were like geomet. I don't know how do you say in English, but it's just they were making like drawings that would be like more geometrical. Uh, and not, it was not just a you know a precise survey, uh, and this is like how it would have looked uh, if it was a, a sur like a, a, re a you know a proper drawing in the modern times. And um, you can tell that the structure has a double wall. Okay, there is one internal thick wall and an external wall. So it's the first time that uh, these appear in Egypt. And uh, this this building uh, has a lot of records. It's not just the oldest massive building, uh, brick wheeled building on earth, and it's not just the first one who has the double wall. Uh, it's also the first who has niches, and we're gonna see it later. Um, and so this is a drawing from Flinders Petrie. Uh, he also excavated the site, and you can tell already from the drawing, you can tell here there are small niches on the wall. Yes, this is the first time this pattern uh, appears, and um, you know it's something that we will see also in Joser complex, the the sun, and it's pretty important because when we think about palaces in Egypt or temples, we have this rhythm uh, on the outside walls, and so this is the first time it happens. It's quite uh, it's quite exciting. We we found the origin of this architectural language. Um, so this is how the structure would have looked like uh, back in the 1900s and you can see it looks like a fort um, but yeah and, and and this is also the the rhythm uh, that I was telling about the niches of the walls they're still there uh, this is actually this is a picture from Petri but but the, the niches are still there you can still see them nowadays and you can tell how big is this is this is this enclosure like originally like an archaeologist uh, ex um, estimated that the structure was 11 meters tall now imagine 11 meters tall it's a big thing and <laughs> so you can tell with this picture that how big is this structure it's a it's a it's it's nonsense <laughs> it's, it's just absolutely out of any scale whatsoever in Egypt and, um, and you remember you, you have to remember this is like we are in the second dynasty we are in the early dynastic period of Egypt we're not even in the old kingdom the son and the Joser will be the first old kingdom pharaoh um, so this is you know this is a better picture and you can tell uh, it's all mud brick and uh, a lot of it is still preserved you know it's not just a ruin I mean, it's obviously a ruin but uh, still like it's still in place uh, not like the others uh, the other enclosures down the sand um, this is the small chapel that was found inside of the structure and has like nine kind of nine rooms if I'm not wrong and they w the thing is that they the archaeologists uh, suspected that the whole thing was a ceremonial structure because they found in this chapel uh, lots of like pottery ceremonial potteries and, and stuff and um, and this so uh, this is actually amazing this is the entrance but it's the second entrance so the thing is um, this is the second and the secondary entrance is the service entrance is where the people is the is where the people will use this people will, will use this entrance as an entrance for the ceremony that would happen who knows like once a year who knows uh, but it's so beautiful why because uh, this struck this so the wall uh, I'm gonna show you the, the plan later but basically the wall here does a recess which correspond exactly to the 
chamber that is not a chamber, the room that is afterwards. And here there is an X, an axis, uh, which you know it's, it's a it's a big recession uh, in the wall, and uh, it's an amazing thing because it's, it's like an entrance. It's like it's it's welcoming you. You know, it's it's a space that welcomes you. And it's something that I'm definitely gonna copy in my next projects in <laughs> architecture. Um, and this is, you know, the plaster, the white plaster that survived. So imagine the whole structure would have been white plastered, and uh, it's just an amazing, it's just an amazing old, not even old, it's an ancient marvel. And uh, here's the, this is the plan. So. So basically, you have like the, a, nor a north entrance here in the corner, which is which, which has this recess that I was talking to you, uh, which I was telling you. And this is the axis of the entrance, and then you have the small room, and then you will access to the big uh, enclosure. Now, who knows why there was a double wall? I don't know. Um, I don't have any like idea or theory. Um, so, but it's fascinating, and uh, and I have the chapel that I was mentioning you here. You see, and uh, there is also a door, like an uh, not a door, a gateway here to the west, southwest, and that's the door, the main door, so uh, the main gateway. Why, why do we know that? Because uh, archaeologists think that the people were just coming through this gateway to give the offers and go back. So the north one, the biggest, uh, would have been used for this rare event. So the whole thing is 137 meters by 78. Basically it's longer than a football than a football field and uh, just slightly less wide. Uh, like a football field if I'm not wrong is about 90 meters if I'm not wrong. So this is something like you know it's something like a football field. <laughs> Um, it's an amazing structure and uh, we still don't have a clue like yeah the theory is that this was a ceremonial enclosure but you know the, 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 these buildings are so old and it has been so mysterious for a long time and we haven't we, we haven't got any writing about this building we haven't got any plan we have a drawing any we don't you know Egypt in, back, back in this time is such a mystery because there is nothing that you know everything we know is forensic archaeology so it's like we don't you know we know what we know we, we know what we can know but Kazakami just didn't just do didn't just build this enclosure he built also in Hierakonpolis Hierakonpolis was also like a center of the early dynastic period and he built the what's the so called fort because it looked like a fort and but and is this one here from Google Earth? Is this big enclosure? Now it's is uh, is smaller than the one that I showed you before, uh, but still. So this is the structure it's still in, uh, you know, it's in ruin, but uh, you can tell it has a similar pattern. The niches are there, the double wall is there, and this is how it looks from the outside. Now this has been, if I'm not wrong, this has been restored. Uh, in a way, and also the Shunet El Zabib was restored. So, and, and this is the plan. So it's like 65 by 60. So it's more like it's more like a squared base uh, building, and it has just one entrance, not like four, like Shunet El Zabib. Uh, and the entrance here is just at the southwest, sorry, south southeast, and. Uh, and you can tell like the difference in the uh, in the end in the get in the gateway is uh, you know it's a, it's a different uh, it's a different you know uh, special mechanism although it's similar it's a gateway but you know there is no uh, axis and there is no room here it's on it's on the left and right it's a diff but there is the recess is there and uh, yeah you you can tell the family it's it's familiar to the, what we saw before and now we'll do the this okay this is just a crazy uh, this is this is a crazy building this building is the first stone building on earth as far as we know as or as far as i understood and 
But now, so it's not the first. Like you can't say it's the first stone building. You can say it's the first massive stone building on Earth. Um, it's uh, it's called the Gizrel Mudir, so it's something like it's the building of the boss, something like that. And it's 350 meters wide by 650 long. <laughs> Just you know. Like how many like what six football football fields like something like that and it, the wall the wall is like 15 meters thick it's like and what survived is like well I'm gonna show you soon so this is the picture from Google Earth and this is in Saqqara so we are already in Saqqara and from now on we will do we will deep dive the, the early dynasty tombs of Saqqara, Mastabas and stuff but this is the first building as far as we know of Saqqara and you can tell right <laughs> it's this beast here and you, you can compare it to the pyramid of Djoser just to the right you see the pyramid of Djoser and you can scale it up like what 10 times <laughs> you have this building um, there was n so no construction was found inside, so we don't have like any chapel or any like thing. We we just don't know what this building was, and we assume it was Kaze we uh, building it because they found like pottery dating to the second dynasty from the second to the third. So it's like you know the period of Kaze we and also we assume that Kaze we because he also built the Harakompolis fort and the Shunet at the Bib. So it's like we kind of, you know, this is what we know. And uh, mm, the f it was first discovered by John Shai Pering in 1837, and then Richard uh, Lepsius uh, also explored the site in, 18, in the 1800s, and then Jacques de Morgan in the, in the end of the 1800s also. So the French were kind of there, and the Germans, and the English. Uh, but the first to excavate was Abdel Salam Hussein in the middle, like in the mid of 1900s. So it's a recent thing uh, that was like excavated. And the thing is that they did like uh, in the 90s, they did a ground penetrating radar to check it out, and nothing was in, was found. So there, there is no trace on a, of any like pyramid that was there. Nothing. Just we just have this huge wall and. Uh, this is what we have, and um, basically also one one other proof, kind of proof, that this belongs to Kazakhstan is that from the Palermo stone, we know that Kazakhstan we built uh, like a big structure in stone, and so archaeologists suppose that this is the structure with the, which the Palermo stone refers to, and uh, this is how it looks nowadays <laughs> so you can't see anything right but it's so big <laughs> that even a small difference in level like even like if it's three meters it, from the picture you, you can't tell because it's so big <laughs> that it's like uh, and also this is also another picture that shows a little bit you know this is like if I'm not wrong this could be the maybe this is I don't know if it, if this is the bent pyramid on the foreground. Maybe not. It seems too too close. But anyway, so you know, if you go there, you're just gonna see like this huge uh, crater, let's say, a rectangular crater. And this is the plan. <laughs> you know, what's left, uh, what 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 is not under the sand is like this. You know, and and I haven't found any plan. Uh, honestly, I found this kind of plan. Uh, also drawn from Google and, and stuff, so there is a double wall for what we know, and the, uh, and the whole thickness of the both walls together is like 15 meters, but it does, it's not constant. And uh, what survived about the like the, the, the so what survived is the northwest part in terms of height, which is about five meters today. And the rest is like lower, so yeah. Uh, but who knows how tall this could have been, you know? If uh, let's make a, ca a brief calculation, if Kazakhstan we shown it at the bib uh, was expected to be like 11 meters tall, and it was 137 long, 
that one is like five, it's kind of five times bigger, so it's like you can expect this to be like 50 meters tall. We don't know if it was ever finished. Uh, we don't know if if, if uh, at some point in the history this was finished. We we don't know. We don't know anything. This is a mystery. This building is a mystery. But not as much. Uh, we know just the few things that I told you, and uh, yeah, this is uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Maybe aliens did it. Who knows? <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna com conclude here with with one thing is that we did the Abydos Necropolis, and now we have a clue of what was happening in the f in the early dynastic period in Egypt. And we know that a lot of it was happening between Abydos, Heracompolis, and Saqqara. And in, we, what we will do in the next episode, maybe I'm gonna take one, two, three weeks to study more. We will gonna start uh, the next uh, stage of the Egyptian feeling, which will be all focused on Saqqara. And uh, why? Because in Saqqara you still have the early dynastic tombs, which are the Mastabas, and then you will, you, we will start with the pyramids, and so why? So we are stepping back, okay? Because we still haven't uncovered the the oldest part of the Saqqara necropolis. Uh, now that part of Saqqara is the most recent excavated, um, so we, I, ex I don't expect to find much information about it. But there are lots of mastabas, and we're not gonna uncover all of them. Uh, I'm gonna select a few, like three or four, and like the best case studies. And then, as soon as we, as soon as we we do them, we're gonna do the crazy Hotep Sekenwi tomb, like a gallery tomb, is just mind blowing. And then the Djoser pyramid, finally. But I, I suspect, you know, once we uncover the north cemetery of Saqqara, then we are ready to go with the, with the pyramids. So yeah, I hope you, you liked the video. Uh, search more about the topic, let me know, please, if you find something else, some more information. I am super interested in this uh, Gizr al-Mudir and Shunet Zabib and... So let, let me know, if you find anything, let me know, and yeah, if you like the video, like the video, if you like to subscribe, please subscribe, because it would be a cool thing, and uh, yeah, I think this is was everything, so I see you soon, and um, bye bye.